Psalm 107. Psalm 107. There's someone near you that does not have a Bible, don't have a Bible, please uh, be kind enough and Christian enough to share your Bible with them. I was really blessed by the remarks uh, from the young lady. Amen. God bless your heart. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Real good. And it's good, amen, to let your pastor know how uh, his message and how his life is being a blessing to you. Amen. So I thank God for you. Amen. Psalm 107. Are you there? Yes. Verse 1 and 2. And it reads, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Say so. Say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. One more time. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Father, we thank you and we give you praise this afternoon as we go into this preaching moment. God, we pray that you would have your way now. Anoint me afresh from the crown of my head to the very soles of my feet. Give me the anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Have your way now. Speak, Lord, thy servants here. We ask you these things in the name of Jesus the Christ. And for his sake, let everybody say, Amen. If you would, while you go into your seat, the text says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I would that you would look at somebody next to you, look them eyeball to eyeball, and tell them, neighbor, you ought to say something. Amen. Look at somebody else and tell them, you ought to say something. And that's what I want to talk about for a few minutes. You ought to say something. Our text today lets us know that we ought to give God thanks. You ought to give him thanks. Whether you do it or not, you ought to. <laughs> Look at somebody tell them, you ought to, you ought to. Uh, whether you do it or not, you ought to. Whether you do it or not, you should. Whether you do it or not, he deserves it. Somebody help me again, you ought to, you ought to. Every Christian, under the sound of my voice, if you are a Christian, uh, you have a reason and a right to give God that you serve some praise. <laughs> Every one of us that is Christian, that's saved, you have a reason and a right to give him praise. <laughs> Matter of fact, uh, Psalm 33 and 1 says, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. Rejoice in the Lord, all ye righteous, for praise is comely, or praise is beautiful, or praise is suitable for the upright. In other words, all the psalmist was trying to say was praise look good on you. <laughs> Amen. I don't know about you, but praise looks good on you. It really looks good on you. There should never be a question or a debate when you come to the house of God, what you going to do? 
Every time we come to the house of God, we should, there, there should be no question, no debate, no, it should be nothing. You all ought to already know when you come to the house of God, I already know, Sister Daphne, when I come to the house of God, I already know what I'm going to do. There is no question about it. I'm not debating about it. I already know when I come to the house of God what I'm going to do. And that ought to be a motto or the motto for every child of God. Listen, you ought to have the motto that praise is what I do. I don't know what you do, but as far as me and I'm concerned, praise is what I do. As a matter of fact, this praise don't just suggest that you praise God, but this this text here it don't, don't suggest that you praise God. Let me say it again. This text don't suggest you praise God, but this text right here commands us to praise Him. I don't know about y'all, but praise is not optional to a child of God. The Bible commands us to give Him praise. It commands us to give Him thanks. It commands us to open your mouth and say something. You ought to say something, whether you do it or not. It commands us to praise Him. Verse 1 says, I'm not going to be long. Verse 1 says, uh, I don't know if y'all are ready for this one, uh, but verse 1 says, Oh! That, that's right, right, right there, it, it starts out telling us how we ought to praise God. See, see, some of us are so cute and so sedated, and you're so high-minded and high-class, when you come to the house of God, you're too cute to say anything for God. But the text suggests that if you don't praise God, you ought to give Him praise with everything you got. You ought to praise God with everything within you. And if you notice, that word, oh, is not small letters, it's big letters.
why we ought to say something. Yeah. I see some of y'all need some reasons to say something. So uh, I'm going to give y'all three reasons real quick, and I'm getting out the way and let y'all go home. But the text gives us three reasons why we ought to say something. It gives us three reasons why we should say something. And it gives us three reasons why I'm going to say something. You all look at somebody and say, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. So, so the text gives us three reasons why we ought to say something. It starts out by saying, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Why? Because uh, he's good. Somebody needs a reason to give God praise and you need a reason to say something. Well, the first reason you ought to say something is because the Lord is good. I wonder if I got anybody, somebody under the sound of my voice that could testify. If we stopped right here and gave about three minutes, I wonder if there was anybody in here that would testify that God is good. I wonder if I got anybody in here that can say that God is good. But the Bible says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord because he is good. If you realize that God is good, maybe if nobody else say anything, if you know that he's good, you ought to open up your mouth and say something. You ought to open up your mouth and let the world know why because simply he is good. And after 34 years, there ought to be at least four people in shining star that would give God praise because he's been Grace gives you what you don't deserve. 